Our next presenter, Dana Wilson, is the vice chairman of the Absalaga Crow tribe. He was born and raised in the mighty few Wyola district on the southern part of the Crow Reservation. A member of the Big Lodge clan and child of the Bad War Deeds clan, <coughs> Vice Chairman Wilson graduated from Lodgegrass High School and went on to the University of Montana, Missoula, earning a bachelor's degree in genealogy, geology, excuse me. Those are two separate fields. I'm <laughs> Geology. He has since been in public service, serving on the Crow Legislative Branch for more than 10 years, later being elected as Vice Chairman of the Executive Branch. Since his election, he has been working tirelessly to see his vision come to fruition, pushing educational and vocational opportunities for all members of his tribe. Dana values and loves his culture, and he and his family participate in many cultural activities throughout the year. He is a firm believer that in order for a culture to exist, the language must be healthy. He holds the Crow language with the utmost reverence and he will do anything in his power to preserve it. One of the highlights in his term is a successful oversight of the Montana Indian Language Preservation Pilot Program, MILP3. The MILP3 team developed a language application that is available free of charge from the Google Play Store and the Apple iTunes App Store. A solid work ethic and programism developed from his studies and his work in public service. He was proud to serve his people of the district honorably as a legislator and wishes to continue that legacy as the vice chairman of the Crow Tribe. An avid horseman, he also a is also a husband and a father of three daughters and envisions the, the kind of reservation he wants his children as well as the children of others to grow up in a strong, stable, healthy Crow Nation. The best way to sum up Vice Chairman Wilson's vision is in a quote by Nelson Mandela. If you speak to a man in a language he understands, it goes to his head. If you speak to him in his own language, and you are speaking to his heart. Um, it's a very, we're very honored to have Vice Chairman Dana Wilson at our conference here. I know a lot of presenters have touched on the legislative part, so it's good to have an advocate of language in that legislative part, pushing forward and being a representation for everything that we're working for here. So without further ado, Vice Chairman Wilson. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm very humbled and uh, it makes me feel really good to, to have been uh, invited to this. You know, uh, just you did it, you know, you guys, your team doing an awesome job, you know, and uh, I, I commend all of you guys on it, you know, and your, your family, your support, that's, that's, uh, that's a great thing. Um, you know, uh, you talked a little bit about uh, me, you know, being a politician, uh, legislator and then uh, an executive branch guy and uh, when I was growing up I never thought that I'd ever be a, a politician because growing up you know you see those politicians they wore cowboy hats and they had big bellies and they talked all the time and uh, I wanted to ride horses and swim all the time you know and that that didn't that didn't really uh, jive but uh, you know here I am um, so uh, does anybody want to hear me speak crow not really well, there's only a few of you that would probably understand. Show that she got, but Chavik, Bish, a shitit, Bish, Kapku, I got it. A chua bago biwak, and Bishbuchbag, Bilpcha, Bashi, the Hashko, Bissaka, the Gaglicha, and my egg walk by a little dillo. And uh, so I, I just kind of introduced myself. Uh, my name, my crow name is uh, Lucky Boy. Uh, I'm from the Wyala district of Chuabago, that's a, a cliff, you know, it's like every other language, it's, it's descriptive, you know, it's like uh, Chuabago means uh, where, where the two places come together and it falls short, and I'm, I'm south of there. Um, my dad, his name is Bash uh, Chilihar, my dad, he's, uh, he looks like a white guy, he's got white skin and he's got blue eyes, and uh, my mother, the her name is 
she's a crow lady and um, we're from Wella and I'm, I'm pretty lucky. I, I've, uh, my mother teaches crow language in, 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 in my school or in the school that uh, she's done that for a long time. And you know, it's, it's, it's not quite, you know, cuts the wood. You know, I've toured that. And um, you know, I, I, well, it made, you know, it made me happy. You know, it almost, uh, you know, to see those little kids, you know, they're speaking Blackfeet. They were speaking, you know, and then sign language too. I think uh, I, I see them, I, I learned something over there. You know, she, they, they'd go up there, they'd, uh, they'd go like this. You know, <laughs> what does that mean? He said the outhouse, right? Or the bad, bad house? They want to go to the bad house. So, uh, um, you know, I was here yesterday and I listened to a lot of people and they talked about uh, Abraham Maslow, hierarchy of needs, and he's got a triangle, you know, and uh, and I'm not a psychologist, you know. He said I was a geologist. And um, you know that's that's two different two different things you know but my my I'm, I'm always kind of thinking of things and um, so I I, I I really took a lot of interest in, in Maslow in his in his in his thing you know and I was like oh God you know how could that that be how could I do something to to kind of uh, for for what I believe and and what I think and you know it's just uh, you know like I said I'm I, I got a Bachelor of Science degree in Geology, and I probably don't have no business talking about psychology, you know. And, but, uh, you know, this is what I come up with. I call it Dana's Circle of Life. <laughs> and, um, you know, it, it, unlike uh, a triangle, you know, I think that 200 years ago, our people were, like, no, Maslow, according to him, there's only like about 20% of everybody's reaches self-actualization. Only 20 percent, and uh, the rest of the 80 percent, you're you're a grouch, you know, or you're 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 in bad shape, or you're whatever. Um, so I, I came up with this because uh, you know life is it's it's not a linear thing. It, it's it, it's always moving. It's 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 going. So I came up with this with the circle. And uh, for a crow, your your basic like your esteem love, safety, physiological needs. You know, a long time ago that was covered, that, you know, you, you were born, boom, you already had all that, you know, because of your family, your, your parents. If you didn't have parents, you had your, your clansmen, the tribe, they took care of all that stuff. And um, you're, you're uh, so then I added a couple more things to that. Um, you know, you know who you are. You know, when you, when you, when you get there, you know who you are. You know, you know why why you're here. Why why am I here? What am I gonna do with myself? Um, you know, uh, all these things. You know, it's 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 constantly it's 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 constantly constantly going, always in a circle. There's no beginning. And there's no end. And and once you get, you know, maybe you might reach self-actualization, or or whatever. And and, and you're not, you know, it, it. You can't stay at the top all the time. You know, it's a climb. And then maybe something something bad happens. Maybe your uh, maybe your go your your girlfriend goes out with your best friend or something or whatever, and you're, you're gonna fall. You're gonna fall. And but you know you, you've been there before, so you're gonna you're gonna know how to get back up there. And um, esteem. You know self esteem. How you feel about yourself is uh, you know we have a we have a clan system. I, you know, pretty pretty strong, pretty pretty strong clan system, and um, your clan fathers they, they give you a name. You know, so when you when you're when you're born, when you're when you turn one year old, uh, you have a big feed, and, and you, you know your parents go to a respected uh, clan person that that maybe uh, did some accomplished some some good things. You know, like uh, like like for us, you know, similar to the Blackfeet people, we're kind of a warrior type warrior type nation and I was named by a uh, um, like a World War II veteran uh, his, his name is uh, Joe Medicine Crow and um, he, he gave me a name and uh, so he brought you know when, when you're, you're, you don't we don't brag about ourselves our, our uh, clan uncles they, they they brag about us but at the same time there's there's another part that you know you don't want to get too 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 big-headed or too whatever we have a teasing clan and these guys, doggone, they, they tear you up, you know, they say, oh, shut, you said that, you said that word wrong, or, uh, 
you know, or, uh, hey, I see, you know, they watch you, you know, I see, hey, I seen you, you're really getting up there and you're acting like you're real handsome or whatever, and you, <laughs> you walked out of the bathroom and there was a toilet paper on your foot dragging it around, and they tell everybody that, you know, and that kind of keeps you, that kind of keeps you grounded, kind of keeps you in check. And, uh, and, and, and somewhere in there, you know, you're, you're taught to pray. You know, we have a we have a creator that uh, that gives us life, that gives us. You know, everybody, you're you're based. Everybody's born with the same set of tools. You know, we all got a tongue, we got eyes, we got a set of hands. You 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 know, you're able to do things with your hands. And um, you know, you get up in the morning, and and you you uh, get ready for the day. You know, you get up early in the morning. I was told that. Uh, Successful people get up early and you and you pray and you get ready for the day and um, You know wash your face you, you take a bath, you know because hygiene, you know if you're clean it, it kind of relates to, to, to well-being because you respect yourself you respect what you look like and Respect is kind of an earned thing, you know uh, I respect you you're gonna respect me, but how could you respect somebody else if you don't have any respect for yourself? and um, so with with that esteem, you know, we, we had goals, and um, every tribal member or everybody should have a goal. And 200 years ago, you know, maybe your goal was to uh, go up to uh, Blackfeet country and, and, and get a nice looking Blackfeet woman, <laughs> or, or get some horses or, or or something. You know, that was that 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 you know that. In the time you're a little boy, oh God, that's what I want to do. So how am I going to do that? You know, shot back there, I got. You know, like how how am I going to do that? So, um, you know, maybe you tell your dad, oh God, hey, ha, is it my walk shot back, ha? Like dad, I want to do this. How how do I get there? And he's going to say, okay, that you gone to go, you know, pray about it, shot back. And he said, well, I want you to go and uh, just don't don't take nothing with you. Take your take your sleep your buffalo robe. And, and go way over here on that high point and, and go up there and, uh, you know, build a circle and uh, stay up there for four days. Don't, don't drink any water, don't, don't eat, don't sleep. Stay up there for, for four days. And I like by him, you know, maybe, maybe the Great Spirit is going to, he might help you do what you want to do. Then you go up there, nine, ten years old. I mean, when I was nine years old, my mom wouldn't let me go to the river by myself, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, you, you look at that, that was 200 years ago. And maybe these guys, these little boys, the first time they went, maybe they might not have got nothing. You know, maybe they just got cold and rained out or, or whatever, but they stayed up there. They came back down and, uh, you know, his dad said, go to show the guy. You know, uh, and he said, shucks, I didn't see nothing. Baogalated. He said, okay. I said, uh, maybe you gotta pray harder. Pray harder next time. And that kid kinda he might be bummed out and he said, oh, God. But shucks, man, I really wanna I really want a backfeet woman. And I wanna <laughs> I want a backfeet woman and then now I, I want a good I want a good uh, roan, roan horse that's fast. There might be one up there. He said, okay, well, man, go back up there. Go back up there and, and, and do what you did again. So he goes up there, and then this time, on the third night, boy, this little boy, nine years old, he'll, he'll get a helper. He'll get a dream, and in that dream, that, that whatever it is that, that helps him might be some kind of a being, might be the stars, it might be lightning, it might be a, it might be a little bird, you know, it might be an ant. Something, something's going to have pity on him because, you know, my God, he's, he's going to, he's, 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 he's nice. And uh, he's going to take pity on a, on a nine-year-old child that wants something. So I said, okay, well, your heart's good. Though. We'll have this guy help you. So he's given something. Whatever it is, he's going to have a dream, and he's going to have something made. And, and, and along with that comes, you know, big responsibility. You know, I don't know how many people of you have a, or, or bundle, you know, uh, they carry bundles. And these bundles, doggone, you know, there's all kinds. That's a big responsibility that not everybody can 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 handle you know like uh, maybe you can't eat uh, kidneys maybe you can't eat raw kidneys and man myself man I love raw kidneys so 
you know what, maybe I better not, uh, <laughs> maybe I better not have that, or maybe you can't, uh, you know, whatever, you know, whatever rule comes with that, you know, there's a big responsibility in, involved in, in carrying a bundle. So we had, at, at a young age, our people were given, they were taught responsibility. And uh, so that was that. And then education, you know, we have education. Yeah, that's the cognitive thing, cognitive needs. You need to, you know, what am I gonna do? I know how to go and get Blackfeet, woman. I know how to get, uh, you know, good horses, you know, but man, that's not, that, that's not all the risk to life, you know, maybe I wanna uh, do something else, or maybe I wanna make a bow or make something. So they they learn these other things, you know, uh, herbs, healing, uh, hunting, how to take care of a horse, just how to basically survive. And uh, that was education, because uh, you know, at any time, you know, you never know what's gonna happen. You know, every day, every day, you don't know what's gonna happen. You don't know, maybe you might get attacked by somebody or you never know. So you're all, you know, you're always ready. You, you're always there, whatever, you're, you're ready to battle. And uh, you know, a lot of times, um, like white people come and, and they kind of think you're lazy. You know, they kind of think, you know, these guys are lazy because you know, men, that time you, you, you hunted, you went and stole horses and stuff like that, but told stories and that was about it. You know, I mean, there wasn't really, but you're always ready to fight. And these white guys that seen that, they said, oh, God, these guys are lazy. You know, they don't do nothing. They sit around and uh, smoke cigarettes and, and, and uh, tell stories and, you know, BS each other. But if we were lazy, you know, shucks, man, we wouldn't be here today. None of us would be here today because we had to fight for everything we had. So uh, the next thing on there is uh, aesthetic, aesthetic things, you know, aesthetic needs is, uh, you know, the beauty of, of your surroundings, you know, I come come here, uh, I went up to Browning here this past summer and man, it was, you know, beautiful, you know, man, you go up there, it's, man, it's, it's, it's really nice here. Uh, my home, when I go to Wyala, I, I live at the foot of the Bighorn Mountains, you know, man, it's nice there, but when I go into Crow Agency, oh God, man, Pretty ugly here, you know. There's a bunch of uh, <laughs> bunch of junk cars there. There's a bunch of dogs. One time I seen a dog. It was uh, laying on the side of the road. I'm getting sidetracked here, and I do that sometimes. But uh, there was a dog laying on the side of the road, and uh, we were kind of going. And my kids, hey, look at that dog dead. And then there, there's these other dogs were eating it up. <laughs> we were eating that dog that was dead. And uh, the dog was laying there, and I said, holy cow, look at that. Then <laughs> we were kind of looking, and then here, that dog that they're eating, he picked his head up and watched us try to fly. He wasn't even dead yet, and they were eating out of him. Boy, that was a bad one. So. But uh, going back to this, 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 uh, this deal, that kind of, that, that don't jive with the aesthetic and beauty stuff, but I don't know why my mind kind of works that way sometimes. So, um, you know, getting back to hygiene, uh, aesthetic is, uh, you know, taking care of yourself and uh, not getting too, not, I'm, I'm a little bit kind of heavy now. I used to be, uh, they used to call me Woody, to Toy Story. They used, to, I, they used to call me Woody, but I got, they can't call me that no more because I'm kind of big now. But, uh, you know, taking pride in how you look. Uh, 200 years ago, there's no lie, uh, a crow man braided his wife's hair. Uh, he braided his wife's hair and he braided his kids, his daughter's hair, and then that was kind of a thing that, you know, these women, they had real nice straight braids, you know, that was kind of their pride. You look at, you know, my husband made, made, made me look nice. Uh, the flip side, too, is, uh, you know, a good woman would, would make her, would beat her husband's stuff, you know, have a real nice outfit and her kids, they all look nice, too. And that, that was something that we, we, we take pride in, we took pride in, and a lot of people, we still, that, still do that today. Uh, Dustin Monroe's not here, but um, he, he like you know he's kind of my friend all the time. You know he went to school here and uh, kind of see and visit visit and and whatnot. And he was uh, asking me something about politics and just kind of joking him joking around with him. He said, "Hey, he said, you know what? Hey, I don't want to talk about that because uh, I'm humble. I'm humble. You know I don't want to talk about that." And he 
kind of asked you, you know what, I'm so humble that I got to tell people that I'm humble, you know, I, I got to, <laughs> I got to remind myself that, you know, hey, I'm a humble man. But, uh, you know, my uncle told me one time was, uh, when, when you go out in public, you know, dress nice, wear, wear nice things. And, um, you know, when, when a guy looks, looks, you know, nice, you know, you're going to get respect. You know, you might be like me and be full of it, but you know, if you, if you look nice, you know, they say, hey, that guy must, must be, uh, he must be kind of, uh, must know something. And uh, you know, you're, you're, you're more respected until they get to know you, until they get to it. And then they say, ah, it's that guy. <laughs> he's full of it, don't listen to him. <laughs> and then, uh, you know, like I said, uh, I'm a horseman. And you know, I was taught, you know, when your horse, you, 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 your horse has got a, he's got a soul, he's got, he's got pride too. So, you know, don't just put anything on his back and don't just put anything in his mouth because, you know, your horse, you, you want him to have pride. Um, and also, you know, I was told that, that good horseman, you're a good family man too because you take care of a horse, you take care of your family and you're kind of a, kind of a good guy. So, uh, and then you, and then you reach self-actualization. That's here, and it's like I said, it's kind of a, kind of a spiral thing. And then uh, I threw in this, they call it transcendency. This is uh, somebody tweaked uh, Maslow's theory, and theirs looked like a, like a triangle, uh, but mine, mine's like this. But uh, transcendency is, is, is when you help somebody to get, to get, to, to become the best that they can. You know, it might be a, a little brother, it might be, a, you know, somebody, it might be anybody, you know, just, you know, try to help anybody out, because, you know, you do that, and you help somebody out, you know, without expecting anything in return, you know, somewhere down the line, you know, the, the, the God, creator, whatever, he's going to help you out and he's going to do something good for you. So treat people good. Um, they say some of the characteristics of people that, that uh, reach self-actualization is, uh, so this is Maslow's thing here. Some of the characteristics of somebody that's, that's up here, according to Maslow, is, uh, they perceive reality efficiently and they can tolerate uncertainty, so it's okay. You know, you're not going to get all stressed out about tomorrow. Uh, you don't know what's going to happen tomorrow and it's not going to bother you. You're just going to go to bed and hope for the best. Um, the other thing that they do is they accept themselves and others for what they are. You know, uh, I might be a BS or I might be full of it, but you know, if you accept me, that, that's cool. You know, that's, 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 that's how it is. Uh, spontaneous in thought and action, and uh, you know you're you're able to act on sudden impulse without any premeditation or external stimulus. You know you, you just jump up and say, you know what, hey, I'm gonna go uh, down to the Oxford and um, get a steel reserve and, and play cards. You know, I mean, that's, I'm gonna go down there and I'm gonna do that without anybody saying, hey, come on, let's go over there. You know, uh, you're problem centered, so you focus on the problem instead of yourself. You know, you're not self-centered. You say. There's a problem. Like we have all kinds of problems, and I'm sure that every every reservation in the state of Montana or probably in the, in, in the United States, they got <coughs> problems. And um, you know, we need to focus on the, on, on the problem instead of focus. Hey, look at me. You know, look at what I did. Um, you know, another one is uh, they have an unusual sense of humor. And uh, you know, I'm going to share a story with you. We had uh, it's it's. It, it's, it's clean, it's not, not dirty. But, uh, I know some of you might be a little bit uh, disappointed that it's not dirty, but it's, it's a good story anyway. So uh, we had a chief, uh, his name was Medicine Crow, and this was like at, uh, right at the, it was at the beginning of the reservation days. And um, so Billings was already a town, Billings was a town and you know, whatever. And, some Sioux came over and they stole a whole bunch of, they stole all those white guys' horses. They stole all the crow horses and crows couldn't go after them. They couldn't do nothing to get their, get their horses back or nothing. So uh, they're on foot and man, what should we do? So then the, the white guys went to them and said, hey, you know, you guys go get it. Could, you know, could you get our horses back? And they said, all right, well, we're going to get ours back. And yeah, go ahead, go. So uh, it was in the winter time, like, cold, freezing cold, and um, those white, some of those white guys tried to go with them, and they said, you know, you probably wouldn't be able to hang, but, uh, you know, you want to come, that's cool, so they came, and they couldn't hang, so they went back to Billings, 
those crows went over there and they, they caught them somewhere by uh, maybe Glendive or some somewhere over there and a uh, bunch of horses and uh, they had kind of a but they, they had a little fight they had a skirmish and um, they got their horses back uh, no crows none of them guys got hurt or hurt too bad they might have got scratched up but uh, they came back and you know, for some reason, this medicine crow, he, he, you know, he knew that, that he thought that was kind of a, a weird thing. Those white people, they, they like to shake hands, you know. And uh, maybe he didn't want to touch a white guy's hand. He don't know where, what he's been touching or whatever. So he, he didn't want to touch or shake his hands. So he, he cut off, uh, he cut off one of those, one of those Sioux guys' hand. It was frozen. He put it wherever. And he came back and they're driving those horses in, in the buildings and boy those white guys they're all happy. Ah, yeah. They opened up a big corral and they're driving them in there and man this guy, this white guy went up to him and he said, Man, hey, I'm really happy and he shook he, he stuck his hand out in medicine crow. He had that, that dead guy's cut off hand and he shook it out and he gave it to him. And then when that guy is gonna shake his hand, he let go of it. So he had he had a dead guy's hand. And he, I guess he screamed and fell over and, and fainted and everything. But you know that 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 kind of stuff. I mean that that's funny. You know to me, I think that, that that's uh, that's really funny. And um, you're you're able to look at life objectively. You know, like look at it without. You know, you make decisions based on 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 the common good, not based on what you think. And you look at the facts, and, and you kind of disregard your personal feelings whenever you're making decisions. And uh, you're resistant to enculturation, but you're not purposely unconventional. You hold, you hold fast to your beliefs. You have a strong constitution. Uh, another story was uh, Father De Smet was uh, was a Catholic uh, priest that that came over to. Uh, teach all the savage heathens and, and Indian people about about God and um, Father Smith was sitting there and he was talking to his crow these crows story about the Ten Commandments. He said, okay, so you can't do this, you can't do that, you can't steal, you can't take off with your buddy's wife, you can't do all these things. And uh, you know these crow guys are kinda of talking about it and that that, that uh, chief he got up and he said, you know what? Um, in order for me to become a chief, I had to break all ten of those <laughs> ten commandments. <laughs> oh, so okay. So, uh, so we talked a little bit about transcendence. You know, we help people reach, you know, become the best that they can be. And um, so that was that was then, and 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 today. You know, we have something that looks like this. Um, very few people reach this. You know, there, there's, they said 10%, whatever, 20%. Um, but, uh, you know, now, you know, it's, 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 it's hard for, for a kid to, to get any of these physiological needs because we have problems like meth. We have uh, alcohol abuse. Pain pills. Um, we have we have these bad things, and it's hard for them to feel safe when you know your dad might be bringing home his, his uh, creepy method buddies, you know, and they're, you can't sleep, you, you can't be you can't be safe in an environment like that. Um, homelessness and and, and 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 it's hard to feel loved you know love doesn't need to be like in a romantic sense you know it doesn't need to be because uh, you know you have a love for your mom your kids your uh, your horse your dog your fish whatever you know you, you love that and that you know you need to you need to have that um, you know they say love is a, is, is, is a powerful it's a powerful thing um, there are a couple different things that, that can cause uh, PTSD, and, and, and love is one of them. You know, you get your heart broken. They say that you, you, could, you could develop PTSD from, from uh, having, having your heart broke. And um, it's, it's, it's not safe to love somebody that's going to that's gonna die on you, you know, like somebody that it's not safe to, to do that. And, um, you know, like I talked about uh, medicine, medicine, medicine bundles and um, 
And, uh, you know, a lot of times, some of these guys, I, I don't have one, but, uh, you know, some of these guys that do carry these, these medicines, you know, they have uh, uh, war war and love medicines are kind of the same. They're, 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 they're the same thing. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's hard. It's hard to live, in, live, in, live today when you have all these problems that uh, everybody has. And, um, you know, we do our best, you know, like our, our culture ways. You know, there's no, you know, there's no way that any of us could go back 200 years ago. Man, you know, that, that things would be great, but we can't. So the best I could do as, as a parent is, you know, when my kids go to school, I don't know what they're going to do when they walk out that door. Uh, you know, they might hooky bob or they might uh, suck gas or whatever, but you know, I don't know. But I hope that they don't. I hope that they go to school and learn whatever it is that they need to learn and then they come back home safe and they don't bring any hitchhikers with them. You know, hitchhikers, uh, meth, uh, lice, uh, <laughs> you know, these bad thoughts, you know, we, I, I don't, we, we, we don't want that to happen. And uh, in, in, in the 1920s, you know, previous to that, there's only a few crows that, that had a high school diploma. Um, I can't remember what it was I, I used to know, but uh, there, shucks, there was just, there was just a few of them that, that had a high school diploma. But, uh, you know, myself, you know, I, 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 I got educated. Um, and uh, it's... it's 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 a different kind of education than, than I would have got 200 years ago, but I mean, I'm still fighting battles. I'm fighting <coughs> language loss. I'm fighting land loss. I'm fighting math. I'm fighting, you know, all these things. So, you know, that's my education. That's that's my contribution to, you know, how can how can, how can we fix this? What, what are we gonna do? Um, Self-esteem, uh, you know, I can't steal anything. Um, it's it's like I just can't do it. So how do I get? How do we try to get self-esteem? Was uh, you know my uncle told me to do what do what men do. You know play a hand games, throw arrows, ride bucking horses, uh, mess around with race. You know mess around with horses. So you you know you have some stories to tell, and um, you know something to tell your kids. You know hey you know this is what I did. This is what we did, and um, and uh, you know our responsibility. Was, was taken away, you know, like the government took away our, our way of life. It took away our, our, we couldn't hunt buffalo, we couldn't follow the buffalo, we couldn't do this. And all of our responsibilities were stripped from us. And, you know, right now, honest to God, it's sad to say, you know, I got uh, relatives that, that are, you know, 50-year-old men that aren't even responsible enough to pay their light bill. You know, and that's, that's sad. That's, that's, you know, doggone, man, come on, you know. And they come around, they're looking for handouts, and you know, you want to help them, but at the same time, you know, am I really helping this guy or am I enabling him? You know, and you know, we, you know, sometimes we love our, we love our people, kind of almost love them to death. You know, our heart's good, we want to help them, but at the same time, you know, man, we're just allowing them to continue to be uh, irresponsible. Um, so, uh, I'm, I'm battling my, my cultural loss, you know, like uh, we were part of the MILP and uh, we de developed a language app and, you know, you know, not to, not to uh, brag or anything, you know, but it's, it's, it's really the best one that I've seen. It's got um, phrases, stories, uh, songs, uh, you know, a lot of our songs is like, you know, it's, every tribe's like that. Um, people were, were given these songs and, uh, even even like uh, uh, gospel songs, you know, some of these people, they, they, you know, they have stories behind these songs, these lullabies, they, they have stories behind them, meaning when, when uh, you know, maybe a woman uh, lost a child and she just, you know, <coughs> tore up and they mourn, they cut their hair and they go out and they cut a finger off and they, and, and, and they just go out there and pray. And you know, may, you know, they might have seen uh, they were given something too. You know, the, the Creator pities these people, and said, "You know what? I'm going to help you. I'm going to help you cure uh, a colicky baby." And He's going to give her the song and, and, and the lullaby song, and, and, and give her this this thing, or to cure an earache or ear infection. They're given these things. Um, 
So this app that we did, it's uh, it's available on uh, free Android and Apple devices. Uh, we had some immersion camps, uh, our one immersion camp, and uh, we had these kids go and 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 they were just kind of immersed. And uh, we had a uh, every day we'd have somebody come up and do do a different thing. Uh, we had girls make moccasins, and then boys were making arrows and throwing arrows. Uh, and then everybody would come together, and then they'd learn uh, sign language, and um, you know it was, uh, it, it was it was really good. These kids sure learned a lot, and they were they were at first we were kind of afraid because um, the target age was was uh, I think 12, 12 years old on up, and a lot of these guys they'd never been away from their mom for a while, and we're like, oh shoot, man, where is it? But man, they loved it, and uh, we got our funding from the state, and. Uh, you know, we did a um, survey with that money. Um, this, this this part was kind of part that I was really, really involved in was the survey. And um, so we found out that uh, according to the survey, it was, it was done, you know, scientifically, you know, we did it random <coughs> generation and, uh, you know, people were selected randomly, you know, I mean, as random as you could get off the voters list from, from each district. So we went to each district, so, and, um, we're at 28% fluency, according to the to the survey. In uh, 1969, there was a survey that was done. I think we we're like 89, 89% fluency. Uh, when I went to school in Wyola, um, we were probably about maybe shoot 90, 90%. And and now I don't think. Well, my mom teaches there, and those kids aren't fluent, but they're you know they're. they're they know a lot, they know a lot of words, a lot of songs. And um, so our <laughs> reservation, it's, it's broke up in six districts. This is uh, my, my district here. And uh, we actually have 33% fluency, which is better than, than, than the rest of the reservation. Uh, closest one is Reno District, that's where Crow Agency is. Lodge Grass, 26%. Black Lodge, 23%. Big Horn, 24%. And Pryor is 28%. And, uh, Kind of a side note, you know, we, we, we compete. Uh, hand games, uh, rodeos, uh, arrows, we, we always compete in, uh, you know, while uh, we're, we're, we're always kind of a uh, little bit, we win all the time. <laughs> and uh, our, our district, how we say it in, in Crow, is he goes to gut, but Judge, I mean, it's mighty few because there's, there's so few of us there, there's only we don't have very many people there, but shucks, you know, we always kind of uh, tear it up. So we tear it up and, you know, these cultural things. And then uh, when, when they came out with uh, No Child Left Behind, anybody know No Child Left Behind? So we always knew that we were smarter than everybody else, but that No Child Left Behind proved it because uh, we, we actually met the AYP there. None of these other guys did, so that's... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> so uh, this is the language app. That uh, Joe Medicine Crow, he's 103 years old. Uh, World War II combat veteran. Uh, he actually, in order to become a, 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 a chief, you gotta you gotta do you, you gotta do four things, four dangerous things. And uh, he accomplished all of them. One of them is uh, hand-to-hand cob, you know, taking the enemy's weapon away from him. He did that in Germany. He took a German guy's uh, rifle away from him. Uh, another one is leading a successful uh, war party and, and, and coming back, everybody coming back unscathed. He, he did that. He took a bunch of uh, uh, ammunition across enemy lines, him and some other guys, and... and you know, they, they they were under all kinds of heavy fire, but they made it over there and they made it back unscathed. Uh, just when the war was almost over, the Germans were, were hiding and um, they had those uh, SS, those uh, German SS officers, they had some real nice uh, horses they, they'd ride horseback and uh, he actually uh, went into the corral and um, scattered the horse and he jumped on one and he scattered all the horses so he stole a horse. And uh, he, he, you know, he did all, you know, he's, he's, he actually did everything to become a chief and he's probably the last crow guy alive that's actually uh, accomplished that. 
and you know he, he must he must be doing you know it was, of course you know like everybody I know that everybody they have people that ah oh, shucks he's he's full of it I mean even me uh, but you know he must be doing something right because he's 103 years old and he's still he's still going but um, this is our app you know some of these things the animals body parts colors and you could hear it being said and then you could also uh, practice and record yourself and then you could hear you could play it back and hear yourself and we have uh, like songs and everything on there and uh, these are some pictures that we had with uh, at the uh, immersion camp those are kids those are arrows that they made and um, I think crows are the only ones that, that throw arrows and, and what you do is uh, you have a target arrow and each guy has two arrows and, and what you're doing is you're, you're, you're throwing that target arrow and then everybody else tries to hit that target arrow or, or get as close as you can to it. And then um, whoever gets closest to it, they get to throw the target arrow and, and, and you go up to like, uh, oh shoot, like about 15. But man, there's like a bunch of guys that throw it. And um, it's it's fun, but man, I don't I don't have the I don't have the, you know just like everything else you know some people are into it some some people aren't you know it's 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 uh, but these kids they learned about that and um, so uh, wait before I, I don't want anybody to ask me any questions yet. <laughs> <laughs> so um, you know I I've, I've been to uh, you know a lot of. Uh, Consultations, uh, John Tester. Um, I went to Governor Bullock's office, kind of, uh, you know, trying to push my language. You know, I want, I want, I want you to help me. And he said, "What do you want?" And I said, "Well, I told him both of them. And I said, give me a few million bucks. Give me about five million dollars, and uh, let me build a boarding school. And I'll have all these kids go. And then whenever they speak English, we'll." beat the hell out of them and make them, you know, make them, make them, uh, make them speak crow. And they didn't think it was a good idea. So, uh, you know, my focus now is, uh, you know, after, after we got the results of the survey, another survey that we did was, uh, there's about 56% of, of, of the population, they understand. They understand it, but they don't speak it. They they understand, you know, like you can speak crow to them and then they'll do it. But they won't, They you know, you can talk crow to them and then they'll answer you back in English. So that's 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 my that's my focus. That's what I'm trying to do is, is get these guys to become fluent speakers and, and they can, you know, but like a lot of it is uh, somebody talked about shame, you know, they're kind of bashful to say, and you know, I've seen it, you know, I mean, I've, you know, kind of even taken part of it, you know, like somebody that don't speak crow and then they say something, ah, well, that's not how he said, you know, like that. And I, I you know, I should have never did that, but you know, doggone, some Indian kids are mean. <laughs> <coughs> and, um, and then too, you know, with the app, I think it's great, but you know, of course, you know, you're always going to get ridiculed by some old smart guy that, uh, you have to get, you know, you said that wrong, or that's not how you say it, you know, but, you know, I think everything, every, you know, everything's going to be like that. you got to be able to take them. And um, I, I, was, I was thinking about, uh, you know, religion. They are they're talking about religion and um, how the Catholic, you know, I, th I can't remember who it was. They said the Catholics told them not to speak, speak their language, but shucks, you know, we're kind of lucky. We have a, we have a Catholic priest that's, that's fluent in Crow, and um, he does his mass in Crow, and you know, he's, uh, he goes in a sweat. You know, there's another kind of a side story. Um, there's this uh, Catholic, that Catholic priest, he speaks Crow, really fluent Crow, does his mass in Crow, but he likes to go in a sweat. And uh, they had a sweat, and that Catholic priest came, and he wanted to pour, he wanted to run the sweat. And that Indian guy, who, who's, you know, the guys whose sweat it was, he said, okay, you wanna, you wanna run the sweat? And he said, yeah, I said, all right. I'll let you run the sweat, but on Sunday, you let me do the mass. <laughs> yeah, you wouldn't do it, so. Uh. <laughs> and then, you know these uh, Pentecostals, they, so we have like three kind of Christian religions, uh, Baptist, uh, Pentecostals, and uh, Catholics. Uh, 
they call the Catholics uh, Itash Dash Shabira, it means black black robe, but it's a descriptive language. Uh, Pentecostals, they call them Barsha, means they put oil, put oil on them. And uh, there's a lot, you know, there's a lot of Pentecostal preachers that they, they, they preach in Crow, you know, they, they, you know, I was at a funeral one time. I don't like to go to funerals either, you know, but I happened to be at a funeral with a Pentecostal guy and they kind of take a long time and that, that preacher, he, 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 he'd speak, he, he was preaching in Crow. But you know, I, 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 that kind of made sense, you know, it made more sense, you know, I mean, I understand English, you know, I understand English. And as easy he's saying it in Crow, you know, das be gerig, not be gerig, das be gerig. He was he was kind of talking about this individual, and 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 he was describing their life, and I was like, hey. And this was like about maybe five years ago, you know. I was like, damn that 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 you know that that made sense when he when he said it that way. And uh, you know that's kind of why I like that I like that. Uh, Quote Nelson Mandela, you know, you speak to a guy in his own language, you're, you're talking to his heart. So, um, okay, now I'm ready for questions. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have a question. Yeah. When you were, you were doing your study on that you did on the um, fluency of the Crow language, did you interview only the tribal members who live on the reservation, or did you interview all the whole tribal members? Um, both, because uh, we went off of uh, each district. Each district has a uh, a voter, a registered voters list. So some of the people that live in Wyala, they vote in Wyala. Mm -hmm. They live in Billings, or some of them live in Hardin, or some of them live, you know, elsewhere. So it was it was it was both. Yeah, and it was it was just totally random, and um, we did it that way because you know, like you said, you know, to try to appease everybody, they're gonna say, well. That's a bunch of BS because um, how do they know that? How come they didn't interview me? You know, I mean, it was it was kind of a random, yeah. random thing. Any other question? What did you, oh, who did you contact to get your app with Apple? Uh, we went through uh, Thornton Media. Thornton Media was. Um, how did you find each other? I mean, you just call somebody and. Then well, you know, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna share, I'm gonna share something with you. <laughs> that, uh, uh, you know, I think now all the all the other tribes are, are we went with Fort Fort Media first, I think, and then every other tribe that was on, I think they started kind of going that way. I might be wrong, but. Uh, my wife went to uh, NIEA about how many years ago? So she went to NIEA 2010 and, and she's seen them guys. They had a, she's passionate about her language too. She was, uh, she was a wild Indian until she met me. <laughs> <laughs> she couldn't speak English too good and uh, I taught her how to use a fork and a spoon. <laughs> but uh, you know, she's she's passionate about her language, and she's seen that that uh, they had a booth. You know, when you go to these conferences, you know, people have booths there. And at the time, I think it was on uh, one of those little Nintendo game deals, one of one of them them type of deals, and. Um, Man, she got it. Hey, look at this! And then she tried to sell it to the school district, Missoula, and you know they, they didn't want to do it. She even took it to the tribe, our tribe, Crow tribe, and at the time, man, they didn't want to hear. They, ah, you know that bunch of. So then, uh, that's that's part of the reason that I said, you know what, I'm going to get elected, and I'm going to make sure that we do this, uh, we do this uh, language app. But she found it out. She found it in, uh, in I think it was in uh, Minnesota or someplace like that. But. Uh, the guy, he's he's a Cherokee, like a Cherokee Indian, and his wife's like a smart, really smart Oriental type lady that kind of helps him. So. Uh, and you give them the language, and then they build it. No, huh? They they actually come on site. They come on site and they say, okay, what do you want to do? What do you want to do with it? You know, and and the, you know, there's a lot of work that that's involved in it. Uh, you know her team, so I put her to I put her to work. I hired her, and I said, "Okay, you know, handle this." After you talked, how you used the spoon and fork, 
so they, yeah, yeah, so uh, they came up with a bunch of phrases and, and, and uh, however they wanted to, you know, like, uh, how do you say bird, how do you say this, and then, like, objects, places, even like uh, weather, spiritual beings, you know, as, as much, but like I said, it's just, it's just a, a basic, a beginner app, and I mean, I have it here, I pass it around, if there's anybody interested in just checking it out, I mean, um, she, she's got it too, but it's, it's, uh, it's got songs on there, you know, uh, different songs, and, you know, how do you say, like, uh, give me some water, or how old are you, or let's go to the river, or, you know, just these simple things. And I say it's a beginner because, like I said, these, these, uh, our, our language is descriptive. And, 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 you know, instead of saying, like, um, uh, like, uh, Chuck, you threw me off, man. <laughs> 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 but yeah, it's a, you know, it's a descriptive language, so yeah. like ilala, like car, like how we say car is ilala. And when, when, when somebody that don't know the, that, that is just now learning, when they say ilala, they, they picture a car, which it is a car, but what it means is something that goes by itself. You know, that goes back to the horse and carriage days when, when they used to have a, a team and, and it'll, drag on, it'll drag the wagon or whatever it was. And uh, so now, you know, it, it just means something that goes by itself without, without being pulled by a horse. And, and like that, that's, that's the next, that's, that's the second part of it. I think uh, we're still developing it as, you know, as we go along because it's never been done before. And, you know, we have, we run into these hitches. We run into, you know, people that say, ah, that's, that's, that's not wrong. I said, well, shut, show me something better. You know, show me how to do it. You know, I mean, I could take criticism, but, you know, you better... Show me, show me something better. Otherwise, you know, just don't, don't say anything. Any other question? Comments? I just like to add that um, in the Wyoming school, I'm from the same district as yes. So when uh, his mother is the uh, cultural teacher, she's she's very very good at what she does. She teaches them the songs, their clans, stories about the districts and why they're called what they are, you know, with the grade school kids. But they have that app, because I, I substitute teach the pre-K kids every once in a while. And they have an iPad time, and it's on those iPads. So we give them to the, to the students and let them bring that up, you know, and then they can go play with whatever part of the app that they want, like the animals or the seedlings or whatever. And it's really, really neat to watch the little tiny kids, you know. And and so they're getting a double a double dose with with the, the live teacher, but then they've got the app to help follow them, you know, up and, and they get to spend an hour at a time on that. So it's really, really a neat, <clears throat> neat uh, tool. I just wanted to add that for him. I got, uh, I got, I got one more story. <laughs> so uh, I don't know how many of you guys know uh, Thomas Ray Oakyle. Some of you guys know him. I mean, I would, I, I, I know him, but you know, he's a crow, so I don't really. Uh, but he's, he's, you know, he's my friend all the time. And uh, you know he's he's fluent too. He's fluent in crow. And uh, he's you know for those of you that know him, he's kind of crazy. You know he's kind of a wild and crazy guy. And he used to be uh, hooked up with the with this girl from another tribe. And um, he said that Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving, they all jumped in there, and he went with his girlfriend, and uh, he went to her place. And uh, her mom said. Uh, Okay, Thomas, uh, I, I'd like you to pray. I'd like you to pray in your language. And he said, uh, you know, Thomas, don't pray. You know, <laughs> he don't, I, well, maybe he does, but, you know, he, I don't I think so. So it's kind of so. What took that? I said, oh, yeah. I got back. I was going to go to the house. I said, oh, yeah. 
Ah, be what a mukbuk bacht. He said basically, he said that, yeah, God, uh, thank you for everything. I'm sitting here in this other tribe's house. I know that they probably don't like me. And <coughs> how come I'm even with her? I don't know. Maybe you could help me. That's kind of what he said. <laughs> 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 yeah, he got a kick out of that. Good. <laughs> and, uh, so yeah, I, you know, if you guys, hopefully you guys learn something. If not, you know, hopefully you're entertained a little bit. Uh, I, um, I, I did my best. <laughs>